would just like to uh, share a few things. Uh, the other night, um, Cesar Mendoza mentioned that there was a business case that he and I worked on. And while you, you see me up here and you're not really sure what it is that I do, I'd like you to be assured that I have been in this battle for 30 years. Um, Don mentioned the other day that I've been to every country in Latin America. It was a slight exaggeration. My passport still doesn't show Argentina and Uruguay. Uh, other than that, I've had the opportunity to be in every one of those countries over the, since 1967. And have run uh, large businesses and large P&Ls. So it's a Hispanic customer that I know intimately, um, how we are in our homelands, and then what that American experience is for us. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that. So a bit, developing the business case is not something new to me. But here's the thing that I'd like to share. Even with the great data that we received, if we just rely on the business case, the code would have been cracked, and we would have, had, we would have the allocations required in merchandise and marketing to do the job that we need to do. The truth of the matter is that hasn't happened. So it's more than data because we've been assembling and, and compiling data and the, and the data that's more refined and we learn more about our businesses. But even then, something holds us back from investing and allocating in the way that we should. If we're in a, if we, if we're in a market like Los Angeles, it simply defies logic to continue to spend 95% of our budgets in a declining market in a white general market. It's simply shrinking. The data shows us that. There's white flight that's going on throughout America. In our top markets, the national advertisers, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Philadelphia, um, those are the top five markets. That represents significant revenue for your companies. Then you start looking at Dallas, Houston, Miami, Washington, D.C., Detroit, and you start getting the message that even in our top 20 markets, which are probably 60 to 70 percent of our sales, out of those top 20 markets, 15 of the markets are now more minorities than white. Denver, Colorado, 54 percent of Denver public schools is Hispanic. 22 percent is African American. Ten, almost 10 percent is Asian. I start doing the math and I'm not really good at it, Marie, but, but somehow I think that's a majority. For a company like Pepsi, they're already talking five years, 10 years, here's what the packaging is going to look like, here's what the flavor is going to look like, here's, you know, all of that stuff they start putting together. And at the end of the day, the retailer is the gatekeeper. Sometimes tradition and convention fights against us. I use convention as a code word for something else. Why don't we invest? It defies logic. It doesn't make sense. I'd like to talk some more about that. So in the business case that uh, Caesar was referring to, it's a store, um, it's a retail chain that we analyzed out of 1,100 stores, and they were across the country, not in every state, but a brand, a brand and brands you would know. 900 stores had 10% or more ethnic uh, traffic. In other words, in the three mile radius around those stores, there were at least 10% penetration of ethnicity. It would build from that all the way to 99% Hispanic. Or, 99% African American in Stony Island in Chicago. So we took a look at it, and, and I don't have a chart to it, but, but let me say, um, let me help describe it for you. In 1990, um, the total population, their universe, was 32 million. Okay? So three mile radius, 32 million people. 25 million of them were white in 1990. Then we kind of fast forward to 2011, and here's what's transpired in 900 stores. They had the benefit that their store, their store footprint grew from 32 million to 40 million. So they grew by 8 million. 
Some retailers don't have that. Some, some actually shrink. So the good news is they've grown by 8 million. But here's what happened. In 1990, 25 million people around the store were white. In 2011, it's now 24 and a half million. So again, I'm not really good at math, but I think we just lost 500,000 white people to Boise and to other places like Boise, Idaho, or wherever white flight goes. There is not integration in America, you guys. It's, here's what integration looks like. The day the first family of color moves into the neighborhood, in the 30 years it takes for the last white family to turn the lights off. That's integration in America. I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm not making a judgment on that. But that's what happens. Our neighborhoods change. They go from white and take on whole different And it happened in the 1900s when there was immigration, right? With Polish families, with Irish families. That's just sort of our own human nature and our own culture. So it shrunk by a half a million, from 25 to 24 and a half million. But the whole universe grew 8 million. What does that mean? It means that all growth was ethnic. 100%. Is it startling? Do I need any more data than that to start diving into what is going on in my neighborhood? And this retailer represents all the packaging from CPG. Here's what we've also learned from the census. I've got one slide, you guys. Just so that you know, I really am not just all emotion and all about that kind of stuff. I can really do spreadsheets. That's my spreadsheet. <laughs> Help me with this. <clears throat> In 10% change, 196 million to 198 million, and 1%. What am I talking about? Any guesses? This is what happened from 1990, or from 2000 to 2010, to the white general market. Wow, let's put our money against that. In all of the meetings we go to, and there's, this is an imposing group to be in front of. All of you who presented, Marie, this is an imposing group. They're smart people here. But I would tell you, from 196 million to 198 million, while that's significant, you can no longer look at 110 million people that are not white as niche. And I know I'm just singing to the choir. And all of us have this mission and this load on our back to go back to our companies now over the next few weeks or the next few months and fight the fight. 